I'll tell you how the Gillock stole Hawk's wife. It was one woman who wove the first basket, the first basket ever made. She wanted something to keep her earrings in and her beads and a comb. So she thought about making a basket. She thought about it. She thought about weaving it. Nobody had made a basket before. She went to see her sister to ask about it. Her sister was a woman who knew a great deal about magic. She said, yes, I think so. I think you can do it. It is a dangerous thing to do. Something might happen while you are making it. There is danger in it. You will have to be careful. You must be careful. Swan woman then went to see her friend, Quail woman. Quail woman also had magical force. Her power was of snakes. Swan woman asked her, do you think I might weave a basket? I have been thinking about it. Quill woman said nothing for a while. Then she said, yes, I think you can do it. Go ahead, weave a basket. But you will have to be careful. As for me, I can protect you against the dry ones, the ones on land but I have no power for the flying ones. I also have power for the ones from the water, but not against the flying ones. Swan woman then commenced her basket, and as she wove, she made a pattern. First, a snake pattern going all around. Next, she wove a water ripples pattern, and she added to it the quill crest pattern. Quill woman had given her a feather from herself to keep among her weaving materials. So it was that Swan woman made the first basket. Then Quill woman also made a basket for herself. She made a large basket, a very large basket. It was this way. She wanted to give it to her husband, for him to give it to his own relatives. Her husband was Hawk. But after she commenced weaving it, she was sorry. She hated to give it to her husband because he was running around and not behaving well. She sat weaving and weaving. She was feeling bad. She did not want to give her basket. At last, she had finished. She had made up her mind to run away. But everywhere she went, she left red tracks. She went over rocky ground, and she left red tracks on the rocks. She crossed the creek, and she left red tracks on the rocks at the bottom. She thought, he will follow me, the hawk, my husband. She came back discouraged. She took her large basket to the creek to wash it, she was thinking. Then she climbed in it and went away down the river floating toward the lake. And then she thought, I wish my house to become a stone house. I wish my children to fall asleep. Then, when I get to where I am going, I will send them a dream, and they will know how to reach me. She had left enough food to last them for four days. Dried meat, acorn meal, and other kinds of food. Now she was sailing down the river. She floated like that all night. She floated to the midst of the lake. 
Monsters came up on all sides. But they saw the designs on the basket, the patterns of snake and of water ripples and of quail plume, and they were entranced. At dawn, she landed on the shore. She did not know where to go. Shall I go south? Shall I go north? Shall I go east? Shall I go west? And while she was wondering where to go, the Gilak monster came soaring in the sky, looking around for people. And he saw her, and he swooped down and flew off with her to his home in the mountains. He went flying fast through the air. You could hear him from afar. Kinny, 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 kinny. When his brother hears him, he opens the flap over the smoke hole. Kinny, 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 kinny. When his sister hears him, she wakes up. She was their younger sister. She was a ceremonial drum. She wakes up. She yawns and stretches her limbs, showing her long, sharp teeth. Kinny, 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 kinny. The gilak is coming through the air, holding a boy in his clothes. He has a man in his clothes. He has a woman in his clothes. Anyone he can pick up in the lower country, he brings home to his sister in their village in the mountains. She is the ceremonial drum in the dance house, way back of the center post, under the smoke hole. He drops them through the smoke hole. Kinny, 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 kinny. She chews them up and spits forth the bones through the smoke hole. There was a heaped up ring of them all around their house. And inside the door there were two bears standing along the passageway. And there were two snakes standing in the passageway on either side of the door. And the watchman was Bumblefly. He stood on the roof of the house watching all around. He had only one eye. The Gilak got mad one day and gouged out his other eye because he had gone to sleep on his watch. So he gouged out his eye and he said, Next time, I'll take out the other eye. And the Gilak's elder brother had only one leg. He hopped around on one leg because the Gilak got mad once when his brother went to sleep and failed to set the trap at the door. Then he cut off his elder brother's leg and he said, Next time, I'll take off your other leg. Inside the door, at the end of the passageway in front of the center post, there was a trap set. Somebody might catch the bears and the snakes asleep where they stood at the outer door of the passageway. But when he got to the inner door, the trap caught him and strung him against the center post and broke his back. That's where the Gilak people lived in the ceremonial house of that village in the mountains. That's where the Gilak took Hawk's wife that time when he swooped down on her by the shore of the lake. But he did not drop her through the smoke hole. He took her in at the door. He said to his brother, take care of her for me. And he flew out again to hunt people to feed their sister. Now Hawk missed his wife and his children. He was sorry. He cried. He said, I'll go and get her back. His grandfather, Coyote, said, you'd better not go. 
You had better stay away from those Gilaks. They are bad people. They'll kill you. It's too bad. But you had better not go. They are hard people to beat. You don't know how. You had better not go there. But Hawk would not listen. He said, I'm going to try it. He hung his porcupine tail comb from a rafter and he said, Grandfather, if the string breaks and the comb falls down, you will know I'm dead. Then he went out outside. He rolled himself on the ground back and forth and feathers grew over him. Now he was hawk. And he laid his bow and arrows on the ground and tried himself for a short flight. He went a little way up and flew back again and came swooping down to gather his bow and arrows and up he flew again, up into the air towards the mountains. When he arrived at the Gilak's house, he rubbed himself on the ground and rubbed off all the feathers and he was hawk again. And he crept to the door, and he shot the two bears, and he shot the two snakes, and he rushed in. Then the trap caught him and slung him against the set of post and broke his back. The older Gilak brother picked him up and threw him to their sister, the ceremonial drum. She opened her legs and chewed him up and spat forth the bone through the smoke hole. And right away, his grandfather, Coyote Old Man, knew it that Hawk was dead. Old Man Coyote cried and put his head in the fire. His other grandson, Hawk, pulled him out by the feet. We'll finish the story tomorrow. Good night.